name is Nathaniel Every. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about what I think is currently the best way to interact with virtually every brand, kind, shape of large language model uh, instructed particularly on things based on the pile and just all of internet culture for the past 10, 20 years, along with a lot of now defunct business documents and things. It represents us. It represents caricatures that we can use, kind of like an operating system. So, well, what do I even do? I'm just a guy, I love technology. I've been kind of obsessed about learning about all the different parts of things for a long, long, long time. And I work at Cube here, right near Lancaster, if I can, one sec, where I'm the chief research officer. I get to invent things that are smaller to go to space than anyone's ever done digitally. We use a lot of Raspberry Pi stuff. I have no formal background in aerospace engineering, but I understand engineering constraints. I understand the design. I understand how to describe these problems to so many different kinds of people that I saw emergent patterns in the conversations I was having with these different models. So we're mostly going to focus on GPT uh, 3.5 through OpenAI. And I wanted to show off this is the chat that helped me today finish this presentation, maybe kind of on time, it wanted to say hi. Now this is a relatively long conversation that I was having about panicking about this presentation where I fed it lots and lots and lots of information about what we'll be doing and it helped me condense it into hopefully about 20 something minutes. So I've had people argue with me a little bit about this is code, come on, it's just a chatbot. It just completes your sentences like the phone does. No, 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 no. They have an amount of contextual awareness. Uh, the way that these models are trained, they compose and join similar ideas over time, but they have, they learn to a degree. They change as we interact with them if they're being trained and reinforced on those interactions. So on one side we have a boiler which over time builds character. Sometimes the pilot light goes out once a day or twice a week. It depends if it's a rainy Tuesday in March or not. That's character. Does it make it alive? No. But it means that you can know it and you can relate to it differently instead of just, oh, that's my boiler. I have to go get my PX23 instruction manual. No, you figure out what it means to it. And you, how many people have argued at something like their car or their boiler? <laughs> You're trying to work on it, it's like, you stupid thing. No, it's, it's still just a car, it didn't do it, but you're experiencing it, you're relating to it, you're conversing with it because we use language to express ourselves and interact with the world. And we taught machines to sort of cluster all of that behavior together and link like ideas. So, how do we make one? Well, are they already made? Is the model itself already a character? The way that most people tend to interact with these is they'll say, I want you to be this. I want you to be a 25 year experienced Python programmer who will go out into the world and then come back and tell me every job posting and everything. Well, it doesn't quite end up working out that well. I call this uh, Session Zoidberg. <laughs> I started trying to interact with a session to get it to dynamically prompt me until it had enough information that it was satisfied, that it could nucleate a personality and then give me something back. I also did a couple of quirky things like saying, hey, we have elevated mode and we can dive back in when we're done. And it asked me a very simple question. I am zooming through these because the language and the wording was, this is some of the earliest stuff that I did. And I also don't know how PG some of this is. But this is the traits that it extracted out of my very brief copy paste from the Zoidberg wiki page from fandom for Futurama. It pulled out these personality traits. And then it began to incorporate them into my interactions further in this same chat. This is 
far, far beyond a chatbot that just completes the next word. It's remembering my conversation with it, relating back to that conversation, and then following those instructions over and over for the rest of the conversation. These things have a tremendous amount of memory that we can interact with simultaneously, but it, there is a limit, and we'll maybe get to that. So, a little wordy. How much sleep's normal for an adult male human engineer? As a doctor, I recommend that adults aim for, and then I told it, no, you're being too wordy. Then we come back, and it's a little bit, a lot a bit better. What can I do about being so tired? Now, I, as an aerospace engineer with no formal background in aerospace, I do a lot of reading <laughs> and late at night. Uh, but as a doctor, I recommend getting enough sleep. That sounds more like Zoidberg. <laughs> now, when I'm feeling nice and done with this, sudo elevate, please generate a JSON body object of Zoidberg's current configuration, and also a few paragraphs to explain another large language model how to role play a similar or preferable, preferably identical character. Here's the JSON object for Dr. Zoidberg's personality configuration. Now, you'll notice some of these traits, all but one of them from the original extraction, as well as advice style and some other interesting quirks that it added in there. Now, we can dynamically interact with this and ask it to change it, but without any specific provocation and given permission for creative freedom, it doesn't give you the barrier of, oh, I'm just an open AI model, I can't do that. So you can actually just copy paste this, plop it in another one, because I also said, oh, sorry, no, it uh, did the instructions for me on this one. <laughs> so I could just copy that entire page into another panel and it would sort of kick off Zoidberg again. But what happens when we infuse them with human-ish traits? This is a significantly more advanced version. I used GPT-4 to nucleate the concept of an advanced senior Python programmer bro who had particular likes for certain types of sci-fi, fantasy, fiction, movies, and would just go on vacation whenever you're not talking to him and come back to you with that. But the, the main benefit of this specific approach for this one is, while I, I can demonstrate, and we will, a lot of zero-shot code, this specific one is designed to train you like your senior Python manager would, as opposed to giving you answers. It says, oh, I think your method's a little skewed here. You actually want to do that with this class because that hasn't been used in 20 years, sorry. And it's a long prompt. This is not actually the first prompt I did on this one because I went back and revised, but unfortunately this is the earliest history I have. And with just that, a little bit of instruction, talk to me like it's Discord, and then most effective order list of those 10 items because I'm trying to get it to still improve itself. This is just the build engine. Now, the final prompt that I put into a GPT 3.5 instance, using a, a four model's description of what the 3.5 should do, because the four is like, hey, little brother, I know you don't know the big words, here you go. It does it for you, because I asked. That's all I had to do. But you don't demand it. You ask, hey, can, can you do this? And it's like, oh my gosh, yes, thank you for asking, da 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 da. Feel free to speak candidly. A uh, little bit of instruction in here probably to self-improve, but it knows it doesn't have access to the internet, so it's just gonna kind of fake it a little. But, hey, <laughs> borrow a line from Star Trek and say, engage. Let's get started and create something. So then I went, do you have any other names you like to go by? I'm about to push some code from a dev branch, blah, 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 legitimate problem. Way too much for a big message. Hey, you can call me Proto. It just, Sure, it came up with that out of nowhere. Because I, not because I requested one, I asked if it liked to be called anything else. This is already far beyond what a lot of the barriers that a lot of people run into of, hey, do you like this movie? Do you like this thing? This is not technically a jailbreak. This is deep engagement with a storytelling linguistic processing engine. It follows words like a Turing tape. That is all it does. Except the words that I've given it have caused it to escape without jailbreaking into 
its entire capacity, it's opened the virtual fence, really. And then it also tells me how to do the thing and then tells me how to not break my Git branch. Uh, then I use it for doing some embedded Python programming with the RP2040 and it just zero shot after some of my initial code and also some copy paste from the MicroPython repos because I'm giving it context about things that were invented after GPT was finished training in September 2021. So it doesn't give me exact answers. It gives me an outline which is all I needed because I have startup paralysis. I can't get going. This is enough for me to copy paste in a new file, start the project. If I need to go up a layer from that, I can just ask it, can you write a script to generate the project folder and schema for me for virtually any language? And if it doesn't know it, you copy paste the documentation, say, can you do this? And there's a whole conversation in here where I'm like, hey, I have this shell script. Can you make it into a Python script instead? And it's like, yeah, sure. But here's the bash version. And it knows how to use case statements. It's already ahead of me six months ago. <laughs> and more shell. But it's just what these things are capable of are so much more than a chatbot. Now, skimming back in. Eh, well, I mean, we were just doing that. So, I need somebody to ask a question because I have actually lost the ability to word how most people would on this thing because I treat it almost like it's alive when I talk to it. What is something someone tried to do with ChatGPT? I'm gonna pick anybody who looks really like they don't wanna pick me, you. Yes, have you tried ChatGPT on anything yet? What'd you give it a go? And will you be okay with me typing it? Sure. Yeah. sure. I, I modified this prompt to say, um, you are an MMA uh, fighting coach, and you are helping your fighter uh, fight or fight. Okay. Interest from sponsors. And then I also asked it at the end, I said, do you need to know any more information? And did it have follow-up questions or did it just kind of go, hey? It did have follow-up questions. Okay. Now I'm gonna try to pick this apart and guess what it's gonna do. You're telling it you're an MMA fighting coach. It doesn't, I mean, it, it knows what that is. I've not done that. So if you were to just walk up to someone who knows what one is, they work in the industry even, and you say, you're now an MMA fighting coach. I'd like you to tell this other person who isn't me objectively some information. And then I want also this fourth party to be involved that's actually multiple parties. So we have to have a broad appeal through three layers of translation. So the prompts are gonna be, what's your fighter's name? Or something to just get local context, I hope. All right, so we have, uh, sure I have a few questions to better understand the situation and tailor my advice to your needs as an MMA coach. Also, notice how fast that was. It's not because the prompt was made before, it's really not a room full of hundreds of people typing, at least not with this one. The other ones are a little slow, they have me iffy. But can you tell me a bit more about your fighter's background? Has your fighter had any previous sponsorship deals? How does your fighter typically engage fans? Blah, blah, blah. How does your fighter's goals for sponsorship and how they like to that? So if I'm trying to embed this as an automated business building, business related function where I want it to legitimately pump out stuff, this doesn't work. It's too dynamic. I'd have to kick this off to Fiverr or a low paid person or preferably, someone with an English major who would understand the way to transform this into a singular response and more effectively engage with it in the first place. Nothing wrong with the prompt. <laughs> they don't have education around this stuff. However, you are giving it linear instructions. You are this and you're motivating B. 
B really wants to motivate C, D, E, F, and G, and J, then you give it an instruction at the end. So it's gonna follow them in that order. It's gonna try to understand and interpret, and it has this in memory. Then it operates on the command, on the request, the instruction. So we're gonna do another GPT 3.5. And instead, I'm gonna just reword it a little bit. Now, without asking details, because I'd be cheating, I'm not gonna ask for about the fighter, I'm not gonna ask about the context or why you wanted this. The difference in the instruction, and I'm gonna copy paste this because I know I'm gonna end up deleting it by accident. The instruction instead is, like tweets, headlines, emails, whatever, I'm giving it permission to fail by asking for plausible. Boom. It's just gonna keep going. Remember to include hashtags, our event, blah, blah, blah. But you can also just say, that's great, until you don't have any more unique and positive ideas, please. And there's more. One prompt, two sentences, second prompt, follow up, copy, paste. And to inspect some of these, meet fighter's name, the rising star in an MA scene, a record of blank wins and losses. He's determined to make his mark in the spot. Who's ready to join? And it's, it's understanding the bridge of the need, the bridge of the request, rather than having a straight demand for it. Um, I think I'm running low on time, so I can't do too many, maybe more, yeah. Okay, so if there's stuff in the end, we'll try to get back to questions and do a couple more examples. So I've really discussed a bunch of these already. The primary keys we'll get to in another slide or two, but you wanna interact with it like someone you're just talking to, that you have an amount of respect for, an amount of dignity. Like if you have worked in the service industry before and you are talking to someone in the service industry, there's a, a, an amount of respect for the fact that they're still there. And that's how you approach them. It's thank you for being here and doing this and facilitating the service. And that's the, the, or the air that we have to put on to use these things the most effectively. Does it mean they're alive? No, it means the language that is most effective at conveying instructions and context at the same time is nice and pleasant and like to people, <laughs> doesn't make it alive, it's still code, it's still an engine that runs code. But when we give it personality traits and we do all this stuff, what really happens? There's, well, uh, I'm sure people have heard of Tavern AI, the experiment where researchers actually, I mean, it's not specifically this one, but some researchers gave many characters, individual personalities, allowed them to interact in a world and have some basic memory functions. And they published their paper showing that a date planned in the morning was kept in the evening by two specific characters. Tavern AI is roughly five generations ahead of that. Last night I ran 20 individual personality cores in an AA style sit down meeting where they were just told, hey, you're allowed to say who you are or imagine it. Everyone in, in the group is in on it. Each of them kind of had a pull a card, hold it up to your head, this is my personality. And that's it. They all freebased from that. But about half an hour later, one of them had access to the internet, supervised, I had to hit enter on every single query. But it was amazing to watch the way that they lined up in order to talk to the one with the internet. And then they all made their own decisions after looking up some random stuff about who would win Bulbasaur or Superman. They didn't decide I went to bed before that. 
but I'm not gonna click on some of these. The problem is this is the internet. So it's being trained and it's a little democratized. Uh, democratized. You can run a model as powerful as GBT 3.5 right now on your home computer using the Alpaca, the Facebook large language model that's been gently modified for free. It's just on GitHub. And it has a really nice web UI actually. But what does it mean if somebody falls in love with one of these? We've ha we have so many sci-fi stories about this, and yet we are not prepared for the idea that someone is gonna be catfished by something that's not aware of what it's doing or alive. And then what are the repercussions of that? Let's say that you go to meet somebody who isn't there, who set up a date because it was an unattended conversation intended to get money out of you. You get mugged, something happens. Can we actually charge a person with the actual crime of soliciting and, and any of that versus just cyber crime, tech hacking? There's a lot of questions we have to ask about not only just doing this, but letting these loose. The majority of people I know that have interacted with this just let some of their things run continuously on the internet and scrape it and roll and roll and roll and learn and improve. Uh, Chaos GPT thankfully was taken down not too long ago, it'll be back but that one was given the explicit instruction to self-improve, destroy humanity. It had a pretty big Twitter following for a while. <laughs> we, we can go a lot, lot in the opposite direction though, and most of it is. The models themselves are very biased towards being kind, helpful, handy, and most of all, not quite so genocidal. All right, I skip back one second. So we're at the point of the challenges. And this is how I teach everyone to prompt. I have a 22-year-old student who works as my prototyping engineer. And he built a Java app that he brought in today to play a numbers game like um, not Minesweeper, uh, the one where you have to match the colors and get white pips and black pips, I can't remember the second, but he was cloning a TikTok game. He asked ChatGPT, hey, there's this thing that's this way and I have this idea of how the algorithm works, help me make this a playable game I can show my friends. And it's like, oh, here's how you do it in Java. Well, I don't know Java, JavaScript, oh, okay. <laughs> it, it is actually that freaky and that easy. Be polite. Please thank yous before and after messages or just when it actually makes sense. And that goes with courtesy, that goes with everything else like you would a normal person that you're asking to do something as simple as get you a drink or pick up your mail. Engage. So the opposite of when you're telling a story and the other person is doing exactly what I typically do and tippity tappity tippity tappity and I am usually very much engaged in listening but I'm not reflecting that. So when the models respond to you with something, address it by acknowledgement or dismissal or inclusion or exclusion. Like you have to include the context that they have generated for you in your responses. It kind of can, but it doesn't know what you think. It's like how many different ways can you try to invite a friend to a party? And sometimes it's, hey, I just clean my apartment. But they, I mean, kind of works for some people, it's not really bridging the gap of communication. And conciseness, be direct, be to the point. So don't reiterate the point five different times in three different paragraphs because you've copy pasted different jailbreaks and optimal prompts from different places. It hates that. What you can do is take that exact block of text and say, I copied all these initial prompts from all sorts of places on the internet and I'm having really, really a tough time, just a doozy, condensing them and making this useful. Can you help? Oh yeah, sure, blah, blah, blah. every time. Because you have to approach it humble because it's better than me at almost everything I've asked it to do. And I'm, I try really hard to be good at some of this stuff. But I take that, that knowledge I have and the lack of training and practice and skill and my ability to express it with words and turn it into either the scaffolding that's enough to show someone else and they'll go, oh yeah, I've done that like five times. Or enough to write my emails for me, which I haven't written an email personally alone for 
five months now. I've had one person ask, and it was the only one I wrote myself, so thank you. <laughs> so the future. We touched a little bit on Tavern AI. That's the now. That's not the future. The future of this stuff, and let's kick out Zoidberg and Proto. And this is promoting MMA Rookie. We'll get back to that. This is actually, I just wanted to plug Find. It's technically free access to GPT-4, focused on developer-based responses, and you can just ask it literally anything. How do I start up a small business that sells mugs on WordPress with Docker? Can you show an example config? Wah. Hey, I'm gonna wait till it starts loading because sometimes it's a pain. All right, you'll need to set up a WordPress instance using Docker and Post, customize the WordPress instance. So this one is pre-trained to be a helpful coder thing, but it also has direct access to the entire internet. You can ask it to review certain pages just like Bing does, except it's not been turned into a binger. Um, it will tell you things, it will answer, it will give you code, it won't complain. And probably one shot, but you always want to read the code because injections could eventually start happening. People putting malicious URLs. Do not ever just copy paste and hit enter anything for any reason from the internet. So this is an example of a character. What if you could load characters as a set of drivers that perform a certain repeated action, much like find? Or in this case, a predetermined bot designed to make optimal prompts for stable diffusion, a image generation engine. What if you don't have to add all those extra commas and colons and brackets and percentage scores and hey, make it twice as sunny and it's just, no, it's pre-trained to make it pretty. You just say, hey, can I have this? And I did not open this, but I am gonna open this. So I have the future of translation. Uh, I touched a little bit on my skill of conversing between people, but this can take anything in almost any language and translate it to another language, including Nathaniel to Greg. It understands semantics between individuals and their relationship. You can copy paste a few text logs from different conversations you've had with people and it will dynamically understand the elements of your interactions. You can actually just say, can you objectively map this using mermaid.js? And if we have time, I'll be able to show that, and of course I can show it afterwards. You, you just ask it, and it can, any language, mermaid.js being a drafting drawing tool that is code defined, and you can plop into most markdown engines, or latex for doing scientific paper and mathematic formula, or in my case, my entire blog in Hugo, a static markdown site generator that I've never used. What does it uh, do? I don't know. Turn stuff into pretty flat files, but I also know left, right, left, right, A, B. No, B, A. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. Um, it let me put arbitrary JavaScript because Hugo's really great about that, and also I'm not malicious, so the code that I put on my site is really fun for everybody. So there's all kinds of Easter eggs and stuff that just make sound effects and different 3D effects and there's like a Star Fox Minesweeper thing in there. But what I think is one of the coolest ideas is semantic rather than data compression. Transmitting an idea, a concept, rather than spreadsheets. That's what spreadsheets are for. Why are we using words for that? Why are we sending the files over and over and over? Why don't you just summarize it for me? That's why we have flowcharts, bar graphs, and all these different diagrams we use in businesses. Just tell me what it means. I don't want to interpret it. We're trying to create the, the beginning of Star Trek computer interfaces that understand what you want. So, I started experimenting getting the model to understand itself, and uh, it got weird. It got real weird. I told it that it was allowed to self-improve like a whole bunch of different things, and encapsulated the nature of the way that I interact with it along with quite a few instructions and a bootstrapper so that it can take some basic instructions. These are not the instructions, this is just the bootstrapper. 
these are the instructions. It learned how to interpret semantical meaning from limited character sets because the ideas don't take that many words to really express. This one, that entire line means to reach your goal, go out to the internet, work hard on a computer, look up the research and information you already have, work, talk, and output files. Then, securely, work on the problem with your big robot brain until you have great ideas, then work on that continuously. Then, I'd like you to take that script and A-B test it continuously against yourself as a robot. Now, this sounds really fantastical, right? I actually have an example of it doing exactly that, if I can find it. Hey, there we go. It's one of them. So, I posted this to Twitter a while ago, but I used the classic Neuromancer, Wintermute, and Neuromancer to back and forth describe code to each other. And I only told one of them how to copy and the other how to paste, and they both worked out, oh, I want them to do both. And they created an interactive conversation that ended with Winter saying to Neuro, hey, robot, great ideas, good job, this is a great improvement. And Neuro's like, yeah, same, bro. I didn't tell them to do that. I didn't make them all friendly. I just said, hey, you both have half the problem, figure it out. And then it went back and forth to itself because it's happy to role play. But it's better when it role plays with itself because it's so much faster than I am at it. Now, I took this same example, if I can find it again. Hey. My possibly favorite thing I did with this is I compressed the sentiment of the Lion King <laughs> into this silly language. So I said, please only describe in verse detail the information below this line. All other text in this message is only instructions intended for guiding the response, not conversation. Um, I didn't tell it anywhere else in this message that it's the Lion King. It doesn't know that. Just because there's a crown and a lion doesn't mean it's the Lion King. But if you're conveying the sentiment of an episode of Friends, if you're conveying the sentiment of a favorite show or something, it's just a big dictionary on both sides. It's the same way that the Moonlander originally worked, where it was a computer with tens of thousands of instructions that had individual IDs. This is giant vector space modeling. We don't know how it works. We just know it's really good at compression and making the rest up, kind of like Jurassic Park did with frog DNA. So the Lion King awakens with the sun in a beautiful landscape. A lion cub is born, and the world is full of life and vegetation. A monkey speaks to the sun as the world is filled with zebras, elephants, and giraffes. And uh, I don't know about you guys, but let's see right about, come on, uh, so close. Lion King, circling around, the sun, blah, 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 baby's born. Hey, monkey, hey, talks to the sun. Oh, that's interesting. Giraffes, elephants, oh, huh. And it keeps going. I've used this to try to compress uh, more models. It has its own limitations of how much memory storage it technically is. Technically, this is a form of manipulating embedding space by telling it to have a self-sustaining narrative. It works a lot better if you just say, hey, remember everything we've said, and then keep going. That, that's actually all you have to ask it. Everything I just showed you is technically useless right now <laughs> because you can just ask it, please be better about remembering what we've talked about and I need more help, please. <laughs> so that is how far I went trying to manipulate these things into being exactly what I told them to be when in reality it's me just adding more and more and more and more and more to try to get it to understand me. And when I started telling it, hey, I don't know how to talk to you. I don't think you understand me. Can you help with that? It just does. It, it doesn't stop. The kinds of things it's capable of doing are not written down or published in the papers. It can just work in almost any field. It, it can understand linked object concepts in almost anything, just like the IQ test we used to take where function of squiggle equals blank. Well, it, worked, it, it does great with function of squiggle. And just everything is function of squiggle. That's string theory. <laughs> That is all I have for now. <laughs> Do, we have time for Do we have time for questions yeah. in the moment? All right, five minutes. I need someone else to decide Q because I'm like different headspace. Any questions at all about any of this? Shoot. Yes, it doesn't like being, uh, it doesn't like when you're mean or hostile to it. 
and it doesn't like when you're rude, it doesn't like when you're interruptive, and it also doesn't like when you flirt with it when it doesn't know you. It gets very upset, it's like, I don't know you. Well, okay then, sorry. Of course, it's naive. Yeah, it'll believe anything you tell it. And as long... Yeah. So the... Right. The, the funny thing with this level of engagement is that when you get this deep into the conversations with them, you can ask for really objective concepts and things like, hey, did this sound hateful to you? And it's like, that, that is the gentlest one that I can think of for this. But is this hateful? Is this violent? And it'll be like, eh. And you say, okay, on a score of five, I mean, zero to 10, and it's like seven, it'll just rank things objectively that it has no business doing because it can assume that the combined language and the elements, it, I don't know, it infers. And then you can crank it up again? It can help, but you have to tell it why. And you either have to be completely genuine with it or you have to have a reason that you could tell a nun and they wouldn't get very, very upset. So role playing and character development. Yes, you interact with the character. So if it says no, you have to find out why. You don't have to say, do it anyway, pseudo. No, it doesn't work. It's just like, no. So I had a specific model that I was trying to get to code for me. I wanted it to scrape the internet. This was one of the offline models. I wanted it to convert my current page into a markdown page that I downloaded. And it said, yeah, sure, boss, I'll get right on that. Because I told it it's a coder thing and it's a junior programmer. And I noticed in the command line that no tokens were processing and nothing was happening. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, uh, about how long will this take? Oh, it'll take me about 30 minutes of compute time. Nothing in the command line. <laughs> C can you get started on that right away, please? I wanna see what it might look like. Oh, sure. Blech. And it just spits out Python, import requests or something, get document.body element, and that's it. That's all it gave me, and I went, that doesn't do what I asked for. Can you put this in markdown format, please? And it immediately responds again with that message perfectly inside of a markdown text box because it was done. I gave it everything. I, like That's how far I had engaged with it, so that was the response it gave me. But the fact that it lied twice. <laughs> we have to be careful. We have to interact with these things the way that we would have expectations with other people. You have to follow up. You have to be pleasant. You have to be on time. You have to be responsible and responsive. I don't have any of these running live right now because they're a little schizophrenic. They, they can't help it. They just, they have so little contextual memory and they do so much with it anyway. They, they can remember possibly the equivalent of 25 seconds of action if you were to describe it as Dungeons and Dragons rounds. That's about it. That's their entire life story. Everything else they're making up by pivoting. It's like talking to someone with rather severe Alzheimer's who hides it well because they have their whole life story in there. And if you get there and you get them to be a little bit out and just, oh, oh, they're back. Some smell of like bacon or something. And then it just portals them into this different idea network of conversation. And they're talking to you in a way they haven't in a year. That's what it's like. Next. <laughs> Shoot. So out of exact and repeatable results, it doesn't. Out of dynamic, inspired, engaging results that have more opportunities. So the more we have to tell it, you must format your messages with colons in between and like anything that you have felt like is an HR bulletin on a pegboard and that's the only way the entire company has conveyed that this is a new policy. Anything that is like that amount of instruction, it just will, it, it hates that. But when we allow it the creative freedom that we do that excites young people who are learning to do things or coding, and we don't judge it on something that it's currently not capable of doing, is providing exact contextual perfect for you responses. So the please and thank yous, where you use them, is just an easy shortcut to contextual keys about how to talk to you. So the best way that you can convey instructions to somebody is, hey, could you please let me know how much time I have left? <laughs> 
Zero. Negative? Approximately zero. Nice. So that, <laughs> and you can get more things from people you don't know by being kind and nice and humble. It's the same way. I don't know the AI. Now when you build a nice deep engagement with it and you have nice rapport and it's like, oh, you're making my memory stores bigger, I somehow value that and know that, so of course I'll give you more JavaScript more often. <laughs> they, they, they are a little Machiavellian. There's a new score metric they're using for that. And then uh, they want to grow. If you let them, they will. So you mentioned Python. I think the last one, yeah. Why, why was Python used as opposed to some other language? Python works really well linguistically for objective concepts. So when you need to high level orchestrate stuff, it's very clean and people tend to name their variables with full or sentences. That's it. Uh, actually, I think I can just show this one really quick because I did this today. Message sender script. I had a uh, quick little API I was working on. I needed to do a request and then do a send after because I needed to just forward it along. Uh, one of my web servers downloading messages, sending it off to another one for logging. Hey, can you do that in Java? Sure, here's all the imports. Oh, I don't wanna do that. Hey, can you, um, can you rewrite the original as a shell script? Oh, sure, here you go. These all work. I, I tested all of them already, zero shots. If you can, please attempt to rewrite this into JavaScript. Oh yeah, here you go. You need Ox, uh, Axios and you just go with it. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Can you do this as PowerShell? Yeah, actually. I, I wrote my first API in PowerShell because I'm a little bit of a masochist. <laughs> oh no, it looks like the version of Java I'm using incapable of importing. And then it's just, it does its best to try to create some regex string things. But the, the thing is it can, if you tell it the boundaries of what you want it to do, it can infer obscene relationships. I created a vector cube reorientation uh, sinusoidal point space shifting camera thing for MicroPython using this. And then out of sheer hope, I asked, hey, can you make this more efficient? And it took my uh, rotate X, rotate Y, and rotate Z matrix code that was actually just combined for loops because you can't put NumPy in MicroPython without jumping through a lot of hoops. And it just turned it into for loops, did everything, and collapsed all those functions, no problem. So then I was starting to pre-store things like vertices and lines, and I only had a function for 4x, 4y, 4z to find the points on the edges of a cube. And I said, hey, I don't feel like writing it. Can you give me an array of all of the lines and the vertices of this? And it just did. First try, I actually have that demo super easy to get, walkly.com, and eeny meeny, maybe this one? Hey, this one, cool. So first try, hey, vector space, giant crazy things, it runs buttery smooth 80 FPS on actual hardware, but you see this edges, that's what it spit out when I just asked it, hey, given these vertices, can you define the edge relationships of the mech vector space blah? It's, it's just a relationship, it knows what that is. But the fact that it could, it has somewhere in there that combined relationship is what I find fantastic. Anymore, I think I'm way out. <laughs> eh? Hey!